okay, cute characters doing cute things isn't really a genre that I overly enjoy. Slice of Life episode of the week anime also isn't really my thing. And I have become really burnt out on the whole generic, is it a video game? Just kidding, it's actually a fantasy world style setting. So why? Why is it exactly that this anime, which has all of these tropes in one way or another, has quickly earned a place in my heart? What's up, Dandelions? I'm Lulu Soul. I've been watching anime for over two decades now, and I'm a digital artist, so I like to share my love of art and anime with all of you. Today we are talking about campfire cooking in another world. It's about this dude who gets isekai'd into a fantasy world along with three others. Each of these three others have amazing combat related skills, perfect for the war that this country's king plans on starting against some goblins. Because you know, it's, it's totally cool to hate on goblins still unless you're reincarnated as a slime. Our main character, meanwhile, has the power to order anything food related. Instantly. That's right, he has his own private pocket dimension of instant Amazon Prime. Now, just, just starting off with this overall concept of this anime, it, it's a pretty generic one. Um, and honestly, it reminds me a little bit of Rising of the Shield Hero because you have multiple different heroes that have all been summoned to this fantasy world with the purpose of combat. Only instead of angst, betrayal, and a weirdly overpowered shield, we have a burnt out salary man with the power of instant Amazon. Naturally, the power hungry king has zero interest in an ability that might like, you know, feed the people of his country. So he gifts our not so hero with a bag of gold and shoes him off out into the city. Okay, it's a little different from other isekai I've seen. Like normally it's, oh, you know, I got isekai and I started out as a baby and I was raised by these people and I have all these memories and we're not really futzing with all of that. Uh, dude seems to be the same exact age he was when he was isekai I don't remember if he got summoned. I think he did, yeah, because he mentions that he might want to go back to his world one day, I think at some point. I don't know. I've watched a lot of Isekai this season. Um, <laughs> it's, it's refreshing to have a main character that's just like, okay, I don't have a big combat skill. I don't like this king. I got this bag of gold and I'm gonna yeet. Okay, thanks, bye. He starts off on this great and epic journey to get as far away from this country and its crazy king as possible while trying to keep a low profile and avoid conflict. Which would be great if he wasn't going around cooking food for everybody. In addition to paying travelers to help escort him from one country to the next safely, he's also like, oh, by the way, I'll cover your meals because it doesn't really cost him that much. And he hasn't really taken into consideration the concept that food created from modern day appliances with seasoning and condiments just might end up being mouthwateringly delicious to the inhabitants of a fantasy world that hasn't invented electricity yet. It is so amusing watching the reactions of the people that he chooses to feed. And honestly, I couldn't resist trying to replicate some of these meals with my art because like, ah, whenever I see well-drawn food in anime, I want to eat it or I want to draw it and I cannot cook and my husband has been busy. Therefore, art time. Also, our main character discovers that his food has the ability to create magical buffs to the people that he feeds it to, and to the companions that he feeds it to. Like the adorable fluffy giant wolf who decides to make a compact with him so that they can get food whenever they want. It's kinda hard to keep a low profile when your new best bud goes around slaughtering entire forests of BNA rank monsters because your food gave him the zoomies. You know, even though each episode does function more or less like a standalone adventure, there's enough journey style storylines and world building progression that I still want to know what happens in the next episode. Like, yeah, sure, I, um, I could just pluck any episode out of the air and watch it and only be mildly confused, but still get a solid 20 minutes of entertainment. But like, this is the most adorable slime I've ever seen. And you know the slime is going to show up. The slime is in the, the introduction of the show. And I'm not going to tell you how they find the slime or what happens with the slime, just that 
The slime might be my new favorite thing that I just discovered, and if anything should happen to it, I might kill everybody in this room. Um, <laughs> it's wonderful. I don't really remember the main character's name. Uh, names are difficult, but also, like, his name isn't mentioned that much, and if it is, it isn't distinct enough for me to remember it, which does happen a lot, specifically in isekai, but in anime in general these days, names are just really difficult for me. But I am finding that I care about this protagonist and his companions. I want to see how they're going to interact with each other in the future. I, I want to watch them grow. I want to pet the wolf. I want to hold the slime. I want to create a self-insert character to join them on their adventures. I want to call the main character Big Brother because I'd still really like to have a big brother. Maybe my super awesome magical fox abilities allows me to create illusions that makes the wolf seem like it's much smaller than it is. That will allow them to go into towns more easily and, and maybe I get head pats and food because of that. You know, normal. Everyday desires from a totally normal anime fan. Honestly, the show is reminding me why I love the concept of actually experiencing a video game as if it were real life to begin with. Like, it's 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 not just, oh yeah, main character finds himself in a video game world and just magically knows everything that happens and how to utilize it. You have periods where he is discovering things about the menu system that he didn't know was there before, and he shows genuine excitement and interest as he discovers more things that he can do and how his food affects the companions that he is feeding. It, it reminds me all the way back into the ancient times of Dot Hack Slime. Sign. Dot Hack Slime. That would be a completely different show. Dot Hack Sign. There's another one that I'm not going to talk about because I'm not a fan of that one. But if you know which one I'm thinking of, uh, you get like, I don't know, five points. Just leave it in the comments. It's nice to feel so attached to a cast of characters again. It's nice to want them to succeed. Like nowadays I see a main cast and it's like, all right, I don't know if they're going to live or die. I don't really care if they live or die. I can't tell this cast of characters apart from the last five shows that I watched. There's no real reason to feel an attachment to them. But like, I want to boop the wolf snoot. I want to cuddle the slime. Like I've talked about this already. Like I want to interact with these characters because they are characters worth interacting with. And also the food is just beautifully rendered. It looks delicious. I love, again, the interactions that each character has with this food. If you're looking for an anime that's reminiscent of Shokugeki no Soma, but you, you don't want so much the ecchi, or if you really enjoyed Restaurant in Another World, but you'd like more of a plot, I'd highly suggest giving this relaxingly wonderful anime a look-see. If I were to give it a rating outside of we know that it passes the vibe check, like I'm definitely going to finish this season, I give it three and a half ramen bowls out of five. Points are lost because I can't remember the characters' names and the giant wolf doesn't have a cute chibi form. At least not yet. Thanks for watching, Dandelions. Let me know what you think of this anime in the comments or if you know of another anime that has similar vibes to this one. Just please remember to be respectful and remember that opinions are like a communal dish. Everyone deserves their portion. This has been an unsurprisingly hungry Lulu soul signing off. Okay, thanks, bye. As always, I want to give special thanks to my wonderful Kofi Dandelions, Wes Wes and Faye. You two rock and your stickers will be in the mail for this month soon. And if you want to find me anywhere else, I'm pretty much everywhere in the interwebs under Lulu Soul.